Hey y'all, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Words way. This is our restoration remedy. Remedy for restoration. Thank you. <laughs> I keep wanting to call this recipes for restoration, y'all. I mean, like when my wife was studying and God was showing her things, like and I came in, she's like, babe, look what he showed me. And I'm like, I listened to the power that's coming out of her mouth and it was just like recipe for restoration. Like recipe for restoration. Mm -hmm. But she was like remedy for restoration. So I'm like, we're gonna use both. A remedy for the recipe for restoration. Y'all know I'm extra. Y'all know I'm one. extra. <laughs> I just wanted it all. I wanted to say it all. But um, this is our remedy for restoration month where um, God even showed me a vision for our women um, that's broken, that's struck, that's that's not struggling. I don't even want to use that to put that. Y'all not struggling, y'all, y'all are long suffering in the faith and y'all waiting for God and and different things are occurring in your life or have happened in your life through growing up, different trauma, generational curses has been rolled around to you guys. And I was just tired of it, you know? Um, we we counsel a lot and I was I was like, you know what? We have the authority to, to bond and loose. God died on the cross for our sins and he rose without power. And I'm like, no more, no more asking God. Let's declare by his word and his covenant with his people what he promised to us and that's peace for y'all that's joy for y'all that's godly husbands for y'all you know that's 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 amazing churches and and, and, and ministry that's in y'all and so I, I just looked at this month and god gave me who he wanted to speak and 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 who he wanted to share and as y'all seen the flyers it's a four amazing women with amazing testimonies that are going to continue out the rest of this month you shouldn't even see me no more after this <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm pulling my head in because i know again i'm extra but I'm gonna poke my head in at some of these Fridays so I can sneak in and be a blessing to some of y'all. But um, I'm Pastor Calvin Verner and my wife, Pastor Penny. Yes, we are the lead pastors of Wordsway Christian Ministries, uh, a church that my father founded um, in 2000, the year 2000. We're 20 years old this year. So in our obedience to Christ and our relationship and pursuit of holiness and pursuit of his will for our lives, we uh, began to be pastors of this ministry that's what he led us to be and do. So um, I want to, I'm going to hand it over her. This is Testimony Tuesday, but I wanted to give her some time to breathe because <laughs> we're about to keep it so real with y'all. Um, last time that we had a testimony, I was giving a part of my testimony. But um, this is this piece that God has brought us through. Uh, I know that going to help somebody. I know this is something that a lot of us have, uh, uh, a lot of us have been through. And I know this is for one of y'all. I know this is for one of y'all. So uh, I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to turn it over to her. And I'm going to let her share um, her testimony. One of the, the many things God has done for her. For us. but For us. Huh? Right. <laughs> I'm just going to tell my side of it. <laughs> Your side of it, huh? Yeah. Um, so um, I think that God is so intentional with how he uses our mess to um, yeah. bring glory, to show his goodness, to show his faithfulness to um, allow us grace in the same breath. Um, and I feel like, um, I know you remember when we had Karis, we vowed that we would tell any and everybody who would listen um, about the goodness of God. We prayed, we fasted for um, a daughter and God answered our prayers in that. Um, but. As I vowed to do that, I never thought that I would be in front of a camera telling it to anybody who clicked the button right. and anybody could just listen. Um, I also never really considered that that would mean that I would have to like go back into a piece of my life that I um, tried to suppress for so long, a piece of my life that I was ashamed to talk about, that I was, um, that I, you know, I just tried to forget so to speak right. um but i'm here now and i feel like god has placed it on my heart to talk about it because um i think it's a part of um the completion for my restoration i think this is the last part that i have to do in order to be completely restored right. so um just to tell my story um i was in my early 20s when i found out that i was pregnant um and um I was afraid, terrified, of course. And, um, but I never really considered 
you know, any other option for it. We know that, you know, getting pregnant at a young age is, you know, sometimes looked down upon and being who I was, you know, a lot of times in my family, people just looked at me as a good girl, Mm -hmm. you know, so I was disappointed in myself that that happened and it's not something that I wanted for myself because I always saw myself married with children, not, you know, in a relationship with children. So, um, but it was still something that I just knew I had to deal with. And um, in that moment, I was okay with that. But um, then I brought it to you um, as my boyfriend at the current time and the perspective kind of shifted. You brought something to the table that I never really considered. um, And that was, you know, us getting rid of the baby, uh, terminating the pregnancy. And at first I was definitely angry. Um, I was angry and um, I was hurt. But as I started to think about it in my alone time, um, I realized the enemy used that time to get a hold of my mind and my heart and uh, put these thoughts in my mind that I wasn't good enough. I didn't have enough financially to take care of a child, that I would be alone taking care of a child that um, I couldn't do it on my own. And um, the more I thought about it in this way, the more logical it seemed to have an abortion. So um, after thinking about it, pondering on it, weighing my options, I just decided that the best thing was to terminate the pregnancy. Um, So uh, I remember going to uh to the clinic to get the abortion um i remember the feeling that i had just uneasiness the whole time um i remember laying on the table i remember it being like literally one of the scariest worst experiences that i've ever had in my life um i remember feeling like um just saddened by the whole experience and i remember just laying on the table crying Um, crying because I was willingly giving up a piece of myself that I knew that I would never be able to get back. Um, Crying for my unborn child, crying. um, Because I knew that it would change me, change who I was as a person, as a woman, um, because emotions had already begun to set in and do that to me. but I, I still went with it and I still uh, walked out uh, without, you know, giving up my child in that way. Um, but, um, excuse me, uh, but I um, leaving, I also, um, there was a feeling of loss that I had but at the same time, I didn't feel like um, I deserved to be sad. I felt like I didn't deserve to grieve because of the decision that I made. So I just suppressed those emotions because I didn't feel like I had the right to have them. And um, um, from that moment on, you know, you just kind of go on with life and you just make the best out of whatever you have, whatever you've done and try to move forward and just make the best out of life. Um, But I think from that moment is, um, like I said, it just changed me. And I started, um, it started a, a cycle of destruction in my mind to where I just, you know, I just didn't deem myself worthy of much at that point. And um, just to fast forward, you know, our relationship, you know, was definitely rocky at that time. But uh, there was a lot of things that happened um, that brought us to a place of being on good ground. And just to fast forward to 2016, um, you proposed, we got married and we moved forward with our life. Um, And at the same time, um, we were ready for a child. You know, we we were happy, we were married, and having a child was just the next step. And so 
that's what we did. We tried to get pregnant and um, we got married in July. I think by the end of the year, December, oh. December we found out that we were pregnant. I think I think I like told you before we was even like married, stop taking your birth control. Yeah, something so, like, like the that. Minute, <laughs> the, minute, the minute you got married, we married, bloop. Yeah. That sucker immediately. Yeah, it was, it was pretty quick. I guess by the end of the year, I was pregnant. And um, we were excited. I mean, this yeah, is what we wanted. Like, I was crying like a baby. Yeah, you were crying. Like, <laughs> I was crying like a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we were really excited about it. And we were just happy, you know, in a really good place at that point in time. Um, and then we went to the doctor's office, you know, went through the motions of the checkups. And that's when we found out that um, I had a blighted ovum. And for those of you who don't know, it's just what a blighted ovum is. It's just um, a gestation sac that's um, pretty much making your body think that you're you're pregnant or, you know, making your body think that you're pregnant. Um, so we had a positive pregnancy test and all of the things I felt pregnant, I was nauseous, you know, all of these mm -hmm. things. Uh, were happening and uh, we went to the doctor and they told us, you know, that news and it kind of devastated us. But um, I didn't know what it was at the time. So I went home to research it. And this is when I started to find the stories of, you know, just mm -hmm. things that could happen. Um, people went back to the doctor and the baby was actually there. There was a heartbeat. So um, I think around this time is when we started to just expect a miracle from God. We prayed, um, you know, that God would just make something out of nothing and we fully and fasted yeah yeah they did there. yeah fasted prayed <laughs> all of that like we were really earnestly um seeking god in this moment for a miracle and um we um just like like you said pr prayed fasted all of this stuff um just to see god move in this area and um we went back to the doctor um, actually, at the first appointment, she pretty much told us, um, and I decided that I would just, if anything were to happen, I would just let it happen naturally. I wasn't going through any procedure or anything. We were just going to let it happen naturally. And um, I think that's the first time that we were, um, that we talked about, um, just confronted with the abortion. I think mm -hmm. that may be the first time that we ever really, like, sat down and thought about it in context to just the the history of our life and the story of our relationship and looking at this as a possible consequence um, for what we had done in the past. And, um, but we still just kinda, you know, just pray that God would show us grace and show us mercy through this pregnancy. Um, and- um, The supernatural, we was- Yeah. We was praying and fasting for God, like, to show us the supernatural. Yeah. Um, Doctors get it wrong. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, right, right. Um, our eyes are on you, Lord. Yeah, you right. <laughs> um, so we went back to the doctor, and they pretty much confirmed that there was nothing there, and that I would have to get, um, have to have it removed, or it would start to affect me physically. Um, and I remember um, very clearly the nurse that came in to tell us mm -hmm. uh, the news. Um, I could see the sadness all over her face, but when I looked down at her wrist, there was a tattoo on her wrist that said faith. And um, it was at that moment that I kind of realized that not only was this a move of God um, getting ready to happen, but this was a test of our faith too. Um, in that moment, I still thought that, you know, maybe something could mm -hmm. happen, you know, that he would show in some way that we had been praying for. but. Um, I was still believing. Yeah. I was still fasting. Yeah. I'm like, screw that. We both, yeah, we <laughs> both were believing, but um, she pretty much just told me that I would, you know, have to have the surgery to have it removed. And um, we just kind of went forth with that. And I think we set the date out, you know, for a couple of weeks, but, um, or maybe a couple of days, I don't remember exactly, but um, we just set the date to have the surgery. And all the, the while we were still just believing God, you know, for something miraculous. But um, um, I had to, you know, go through with the surgery and have it removed. And um, I think at that moment, it really hit us like a ton of bricks that um, we had had a miscarriage. And 
we sought God in this way, in a way that, um, in a in a place of pain <laughs> and um, anger. some anger. Confusion. Yeah, confusion, Hurt. all of that, yeah. But at the same time, we, um, I believe that was a, the time that we sincerely repented and we fasted um, even from sex. Um, and we just decided that we would let God decide when it was time for us to have a child. Mm -hmm. We, you know, didn't plan it. We didn't, when we weren't watching the, the calendar anymore. And we were doing everything <laughs> yeah. to get pregnant. Yeah. We so, would precede that okay. too. Thanks. We don't everything, Thank bro. You. We was on the clock. <laughs> Bro, I'm putting but, in work. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you. <laughs> like, bro, like, how you gonna do it like this? No, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. So we um, we just decided that we would let God, you know, handle it from here on out. And um, I think at that moment, we just, like I said, just gave it to God, and yeah, we were um. Like when that fast was over, nothing. We got yeah. no word from God. Yeah. And we're just like, well, I guess we just. Yeah, we just kind of moved on with our life. But in the back of my head, I still just, um, just remember, you know, that this was this was this was a a consequence of what happens, you know, when you're out of the will of God and Absolutely. when you do things against His will. Um, so part of me was, um, part of me did feel like I deserved it. You know, part of me did feel like this is what you get, but part of me was still um, just sincerely humbled and submitted to God that his will was perfect, you know, for our life and that whenever he saw fit, it would just, you know, happen for us. So um, fast forward, you know, we're just living life and um, three months later, after we fasted, after you know, we prayed and just kind of gave it to God. We ended up getting pregnant again. Was it that long? Yeah, it was three months. It was about three months. I, I remember we went to. It was a wedding. Well and yeah. wedding. It was in May or something like that. And that we was found day. out that morning. Yeah. yeah. So in May, yeah. yeah, we found out that we were pregnant. Like a month or two. No, I think it was about three months. Was it? Okay. Two or three months. I know we went. We fasted for a month after that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, yeah, we found out we were pregnant and. Literally, we found out we were pregnant on Saturday. Sunday, we went to church. And um, I went up to get prayed for, and literally nobody knew that I was pregnant except my husband and the people that he blabbed to because he couldn't contain himself at the wedding. But um, <laughs> nobody else knew. And um, I went up to get prayed for, and um, it was prophesied that God had healed my womb, um, that I should go to the doctor and get checked out, and that all will be well. And those were the words that stuck with me, all will be well. Um, and it literally blew our mind. Like nobody knew. Literally blew our mind. We found that, out Saturday morning. Yeah. Twenty four hours later, we were you was at the altar and boom, prophecy, which we already knew, but it was confirmation. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just confirmation. We um, were a little scared. Even like we were happy. Yeah. We just had to wait and celebrate. People didn't know why we were so happy, but in yeah. the back of our mind, you get a little bit like, okay, this is just going to be a round two of another. Yeah, I remember loss. I remember that, but I do remember feeling like that even when you were ready to do the announcement. I was very hesitant, and I remember you telling me, like, babe, God said all is well. So let's just move forward in confidence, <laughs> you know, in, in his word. So that's what we did. And I was terrified, you know, that I would have another miscarriage. But at the same time, I had to trust God and um, and know that, you know, his word is his word and it's truth. So, um, you know, we just started to enjoy our pregnancy. We told our family mm -hmm. and started to just enjoy it and live mm -hmm. in the goodness of the grace of God, because um, that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and um, from then, I remember having the dream about, we were going back and forth about the name. You guys know it had to be a K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. anyway, <laughs> it had to be no, a no, K. No, no. So we were stuck between Karis and Carter. And um, I had a dream that- I was sold on Carter. You were, you were, you were right. sold on Carter. But I had a dream about our child and the name Karis. We were calling her Karis. 
Um, and when I woke up or the day, you know, I mm -hmm. told you about it and I think that's when we looked up what the name Karis meant and we realized that it meant grace. Um, and if anybody know me, I know my favorite number is five. That's my, my it's, it's been my favorite number was five before I was alpha because in the Bible it means grace. And that's been my favorite. I knew God, my whole life was built on the grace of God because I had nothing was me. I did, I deserved nothing. So when she was like, it means grace, I'm like, okay. Yeah. 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 So we discovered that it, her name actually meant grace. And from then on, we were so like, this is definitely her name. This is definitely God. Like in the midst of all of this, we just knew that it was God. Um, I wanted to call her Elise. I already had her middle name as Elise. Mm -hmm. And then when we looked it up, Elise means it's short for Elizabeth. We, and it means yeah, God you is. Yeah, you wanted to name her Karis is, Elizabeth. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. I wanted <laughs> to name her like, Karis no. Elizabeth. <laughs> and you like, nah, Elise. And we looked up Elizabeth. Yeah, it was and it, short it mean, for her. Elise yeah. was short for Elizabeth. And it means God is satisfactory. So I'm like, God is sufficient, God's yeah. grace is sufficient. Yeah. Don't make me preach on this testimony. <laughs> God's grace yeah. is satisfactory. Yeah. So her name <sighs> is full of full Hidden purpose blessings. like literally um and it's just a testimony for our life like literally every time we look at her every time i look at her i just see god's grace all over oh her gosh. like in in our life and it's um Absolutely. i knew that it was it was complete when um after my pope after having her postpartum checkup i went to the doctor and um i was waiting for the nurse to come in and in comes a nurse, she's, you know, going through the motions and everything. And I look down and there's that faith tattoo again. Mm -hmm. um, and I literally just started crying, like right there on the table. And she's looking at me like, what is going on? So I had to tell her the story. And we're both just sitting in the office crying, hugging each other, two strangers, mm -hmm. um, like about the goodness and the grace of God. And I had to let her know that it was her tattoo, you know, that that started this whole motion of just believing God and having faith in him, even when it hurts, even when it looks impossible, even when you know you don't deserve his grace, just having faith um, that God is sovereign, that God is almighty, that his will for our life is perfect when we're in his, his plan, um, or his plan for our life is perfect when we're in his will. Um, so, I don't know, like I said, every time we just look at Karis, we just see every the grace of God all over our life. Every day. And we're so thankful for it. Um, I guess oh it just doesn't really. That's the two things, like, I really want us to, that. like, pull out of this testimony. Like, I really want to try to, like, pull out these two things. Because um, God showed us many things in here, but the two things that was the biggest things I really want, um, you know, people listening is to pull is trust God even when He says no. You know, when she's when she's telling her testimony, I'm hearing God say, "Trust me, even when I say no." Um, we was fasting, like, bro, I was on a veggie diet, like, and y'all know I like to eat, and I wouldn't eat nothing but vegetables and water. Like, God, I'm gonna force you to move according to your word. I'm gonna give you all I got, and we're living for Christ at this point. Like, we're giving Him, we're doing the best we can to live for Christ, uh, and we, I mean, couldn't get pregnant, and um, when we got pregnant, boom. We lose a pregnancy, and I'm like, I'm giving you everything. I mean, my mom, my mom, my, 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 how dare you? Like, like, I'm out here like doing everything I can, and he said no through fasting and praying. That first time, he said no, and then it dawned on us, like she said, we never truly repented. Um, it comes to mind, David, um, his sin, you know, um, Uriah's wife, and. Um, he prayed and fasted to God to, to not, you know, to save that pregnancy, and God chose not to. He fasted and prayed, and God still said no. And, um, but he ran it back, here comes Solomon, you know. So we just have to just continue to trust him even when he says no. And that's my second thing I want to try to draw, pull out of this testimony is get repented. Like, that's y'all know one of our most popular you know, shirts and hoodies that we sell is, is the repent it. And I, I came up with that. We came up with that because that one thing that shifted our life when we came sold out for Jesus and then when we became repentant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
Because we can know God and shout every Sunday and there's no even real repentance in our life. We leave and just like go back to like mess and though that God, though God forgave us for that sin, we still never dealt with that sin and got repented for it. And he allowed us to go through a lot of pain and suffering to understand that point. And God can turn lemon into lemonade. Like he can, he, 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 he is, he is omnipotent sovereignty. And he can turn lemon into lemonade and that thing that almost tried to kill our marriage even, our marriage suffered. Because I'm thinking, I got two kids. You don't work. <laughs> like, you don't work. All these things come in your mind. And then she's looking at me like, I blame you because I had an abortion. So now my body's jacked up. And it's because of you. You the one did this. And it, it, it started, your marriage start to take like a, a hit. And I thank God because instead of us going further apart, we allowed it to pull us like closer like that experience going through that, we just stay linked up. We just stay like, no, babe, let's pray together. We stay fasting together. We just stay together. Like we stay, it made us stronger. And and just, oh my God, because we understand we're going to Christ for everything. I don't care if we, we pray about it. We fasten about it. We will pray and fast. We will fast y'all four or five, six times a year, long months, weeks type. Like we just stand before God as a couple, as a, as a married couple. And, um, Trust God when he say no. That faith thing popped up on that lady's wrist and we was like, trust him even when he say no. Mm -hmm. And when we stop worrying about it yeah. and stop trying to do it ourselves and just start enjoying our marriage again, enjoying sex. Bro, bro sex got horrible for a minute because we was trying so hard to have a baby. It wasn't even to please each other. We were like, all right, it's time. I'm, I'm ovulating. Let's go. And when we stopped doing that and just focus on Christ and, and repented and moved on, I wake up one Saturday morning and it's a little thing on the <laughs> counter, you know, and we just, Saturday morning, we're getting up, you know, the boys just left and boom, you know, and we go to a wedding that day, ecstatic. Like, it was almost like our personal celebration. I think we danced the whole night, like just at that wedding. And God just, the next day confirming it through through prophecy. Um, trust God even when he say no and get repented and, um, if you've ever had an abortion or went through this um, or dealt with a coward man like I was back then, like manipulating that situation into having her get an abortion because she didn't want to. It was dealing with a coward like me who put that, who, who manipulated the situation into doing that um, and to go in that direction. Um, if you ever had it, God don't care. And I mean that with all biblical. I'm saying that for as a pastor with all He do not care about your sin. Like, he wants to use that. He wants to use everything you've been through. He ordained this moment. He didn't ordain the sin, but the minute the sin happened, he said, I don't worry about it. I can fix that. I can turn that lemon into lemon. I'll use it later. Like, he doesn't care about your sin. Like, ask God for forgiveness. And after he forgives you, move on. Because what the enemy tried to do then is take and suppress her, yeah. her testimony and suppress what God had for her by making her feel less and making her feel unwanted. Through, through my words and through him just messing with her mind. And years later, she finally fin been able to feel free. When God gives us grace, that free gift of repentance for sin, let that be enough. I remember one time she was just, just not wanting to do anything. Like, how dare I preach don't have an abortion when I did? I feel like a, I feel like a, hypocrite. a hypocrite. And I remember God told me to tell her, is his grace not good enough for you? If he says you're forgiven, and you, you won't even forgive yourself. Now you're saying that his grace is not good enough to cover you. Now his, what he's offering you, truly, true forgiveness and, and freedom is not good enough. And I remember she's like, man, wow. And he wants you free. Yeah. Sin can't, it, it, there is no more bondage. The, the, the resurrection of Christ freed you from that. So if you did that, you get repented. He, it says he wipes it away. There's no condemnation. There's no condemna condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you will live for Christ Jesus and you are repentant, you move on and you tell your testimony boldly. Don't let the enemy make you look crazy because you belong to the king. Yeah. You belong to the king. Um, I thank God for you. I thank God for you every day. Um, I, I, I truly do. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> no, I mean, you kind of just hit on it all. Just don't, don't allow the enemy to make you believe that um, that God's forgiveness is not enough because it is, like you said, it's, it's more than enough and it en encompasses everything that we could ever imagine. Um, so release yourself from that, um, that shame 
in that um, that guilt if if you have something in your past that's holding you back um, just allow it to be used to glorify God um, and like you said when you've repented for that um, you'll start to see God restore restoration in your life um, that's all like it's it. just trust trust God through yeah. it all and these are your pastors dirty old sinful people we're not perfect oh gosh here's here's our blessing come on what's wrong oh god there, there's our there's our bundle of joy <laughs> here's our bundle of joy she sees um She's exactly what we pray for. A little girl. Every like her toe hurt. Everything hurt. You okay? Yeah. You okay? You wanna kiss it? Want me to kiss it? Yeah? Okay, daddy, kiss it. Mm. Is that better? Not that. Not that one. This one? I kissed the wrong one. Well guys, um, that's your pastors. That's who God has chosen. A dirty old sinner. That's that's some of our dirt. We can give y'all a lot more. But um, we want to be transparent. We're not trying to be cute or hot or, or look, be famous or anything. We're just going to do what God <laughs> asks us to do. And we're going to show you guys everything God has put us through because we believe He has us in this position for a reason. So I thank you guys for um, tuning in. And tomorrow, she will be sharing the word of restoration with you guys that God has given her. So I want you guys to tune in for tomorrow for Word Wednesday. As Pastor Penny uh, shares with y'all um, uh, a little bit of word that God has given him. Yes. So, guys, keep praying for us as we're praying for y'all. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, and we all need God's grace. <laughs> and we all need his saving power. So, where's way out? <laughs>